Welcome to our lecture online. In the previous video, we simply ran out of room to complete the problem. So we're continuing with the same problem. Here's the circuit. In the previous problem, we found an equation for the voltage as a function of time. We ended up as far as this far with the derivative of the voltage with respect to time. And now what we're going to do is we're going to try to find an equation for the current with respect to time and then find the voltage across the resistor with respect to time. So, why do we need this equation right here? Well, it turns out that there's a relationship between the current and the derivative of the voltage with respect to time when we multiply the times the capacitance. So we need to complete this, put it into a more simplified form, and then we can solve for the current. Now notice we had values for A1 and A2, and here we have not yet substituted the value we found for A2, so we need to do that. So A2 becomes a minus 1.732. So minus 1.732, and then over here, A2 also becomes a minus 1.732. So now let's complete that equation and find the current. And I'll probably need my calculator for that. So here we go. First of all, the cosine term. <clears throat> so we can write the dvdt is equal to we have a minus 3 times the cosine, but we have to multiply that to minus 2, which gives us a positive 6. And then over here, the cosine term, we have to multiply these two together. So we end up with 3.464 times 1.732. And notice that's also 6, but a minus 6. So that means that for the cosine term, we get a 6 minus 6 times the cosine of 3.464t, which means the cosine term simply drops off. All right, so now the sine term. So for the sine term, we have a negative 1.732 times negative 2, so that becomes a positive 3.464. And then we add that to this right here, so plus 10.392, so end up with a plus... 13.856 times the sine of 3.464t, like this, and then the whole thing multiplied by the e to the minus 2t. All right, so that gives us the VDT. Now, to get the current, we need to multiply times the capacitance. So the current is equal to the capacitance times the VDT, which is equal to 1 because that's what the capacitance is, 1 40th times dv dt. So this goes to zero, so we're left with this, 13.856 times the sine of 3.464t multiplied times e to the minus 2t. Notice we don't have a constant term because we took the derivative, and so the constant term dropped off. And we take that divided by 40, we get 0.346, Four. All right, so now we have the current as a function of time is equal to 0 0.3464 times the sine of 3 point, oh yes, 3.464. That's kind of interesting here. Notice that the number, this is one tenth of this number right here. And then we multiply it times e to the minus 2t. So now we have an equation that gives us the current to the circuit as a function of time. Now take a look. It's the transient current, but it doesn't have a constant term. Now when we take a look at the circuit here, notice that once we close the switch in this direction, we have the power supply that pushes current through the circuit. Eventually, the capacitance will fill with, with charge. Once the voltage on the capacitor is equal to the voltage across the power supply, the current will stop. And that shows that when e to the minus 2t, when t gets big, that becomes zero. And so the equation seems to make sense. Now we need to have equation for the voltage across a resistor as a function of time. Now using Ohm's law, we can write that the current is equal to V over R, which means that the voltage is equal to I times R. So we have to multiply the current times the resistance. So in this case, that's this equation times the resistance, which is 10, 10 ohms. So that's 10 times this, so this becomes 3.464 times the sine of 3.464t. And the whole thing multiplied times e to the minus 
T. And of course, this is in terms of amps, and this is in terms of volts to keep them straight. And that is how it's done. Yes, I got the right answer. I didn't interchange the three and the nine.